Melinda Chapman. I'm the groundwater specialist for the USGS here in North Carolina. I'm also the project chief of our baseline groundwater sampling effort that is related to potential shale gas exploration in North Carolina. We've had some test well drilling since the 1970s, but have not allowed directional drilling for the industry to come into the state yet, and it's very important that we get background groundwater quality data, and we have not worked in this area since the 1960s or 70s. And a lot of folks are using groundwater as their primary <laughs> drinking water source, so they depend on the resource. So it's important for us to get that baseline information just in case there are changes related once drilling does occur or is allowed by the state. My name is Sharon Fitzgerald. I'm with the USGS in North Carolina also in the same office as Melinda. Um, I'm, I'm working with her on her project to uh, establish a sampling plan and a quality assurance and quality control plan so that we generate data that is very defensible and that we will stand behind. We're doing all kinds of uh, a huge list of analytes to help determine whether there is an environmental impact from the the um, hydrofracking operations. The, the principal objectives are to establish baseline geochemistry for the shallow groundwater system in the area. So we're looking at, for instance, how much calcium's in the water, um, how hard it is, what's the pH, what are any trace organics, is, is there any naturally occurring methane that is shallow, can we determine if it has a biogenic shallow resource or if it's tied to some discharge deeper uh, thermogenic gas that is natural with the, of course, the shale gas resource. This is a reconnaissance effort, so we're doing 50 wells, you know, it's, it's probably enough for reconnaissance. We're doing various uh, analyses at the, at the wells and um, hopefully that'll be a good snapshot of the entire area. Right, this, the study area is about 77 square miles. It's about a quarter of Lee County in the southeastern extreme part of Chatham County along the Deep River. And we are in the Triassic Basin of North Carolina. It's the early Mesozoic Basin of the eastern U.S. Uh, deposits are sedimentary layers here, part of a rift basin that formed when uh, the supercontinent Pangaea split apart from North America and Africa. So these are freshwater sediments. They're shales, sandstones, conglomerates, those types of rocks. And the concern here, there's, there has been some exploration since the mid-70s. Um, the gas is shallower here. It's in an organic rich black shale uh, named the Cumnock Formation. It's a bit shallower here, so the drinking water wells are a bit closer to the gas reservoir compared to other areas of the country. One of the main things we're looking for is not just is there methane, is there not methane, but also we can look at the, the isotopes of the carbon and the hydrogen on the methane to determine whether the source is very old petrogenic um, fracking stuff or if it's n new biogenic um, gases which will be lighter uh, that happens just naturally in the environment. Right, so it's also a matter of deep groundwater versus shallow groundwater too. Right. Um, and there was some historical coal mining in this area uh, that did have some methane explosions associated with it. So we know there is some natural methane here, just not sure how how shallow that continues. We have a unique opportunity here, um, I don't think in any other state that we've heard of, to come in before the industry is here to obtain these baseline samples. We have uh, partners, we have universities cooperating with us, we have state agencies cooperating with us. So we're working with Duke University with Dr. Rob Jackson, Dr. Avner Van Gosh in the Nicholas School of the Environment, and his primary PhD student is Adrian Down. Uh, UNC Chapel Hill is also collecting strontium isotopes at the wells also. And our support for the project uh, is from North Carolina Department of Environment and Natural Resources and the USGS through our um, water mission area. So the primary issue here is even though there is some county water from surface water resources, most folks still obtain their water supplies from wells, which is shallow groundwater. So we're talking in general an average of 300 feet in depth or so. The shale gas resource in this area can be as shallow as about 2,000 feet. So those are the differences we're looking at. And I guess there's evidence out there that even though that sounds like a big difference, 2,000 versus 300, that there's still a possibility that um, 
chemicals or gases could possibly um, come up and affect the water resources. Well, the issue too is that the flowback water that comes out of these wells is held in surface ponds. So you have deeper groundwater that has a higher salinity in general and you have it mixed with the hydro fracturing chemicals that are held in these holding ponds on the surface that are generally lined, but if you get a large rainstorm that could run off or it could potentially leak and affect the shallow groundwater wells in the area. I think the challenges are that there haven't been many of these baseline studies conducted so we didn't have a set of analytes ready for us, so we had to do quite a bit of investigative work. We tried to hit most everything that, that we thought was most indicative, most important to establish before, um, to see if there's a change pre and post development of the resource. So we looked at areas where there is ongoing exploration and production, just to see what they're looking for, what the state agencies and federal agencies are looking for in their groundwater samples. It really is an, uh, an unknown unknown. So it, it's important to start looking at this whole topic rigorously on a national scale. And North Carolina is sort of out ahead on this in that we have the opportunity to get in there before any activity occurs so we can get a baseline. And so we're just covering our bases, trying to analyze everything before anything happens. And then so we have an idea of what's there. And then if there's any changes, we can try to see if it's relate that back or not. The, the product will be an interactive okay. Google map of the well, generalized well location. No homeowner's names or addresses will be displayed. And it'll be a clickable map where you can click on the well location and the chemistry data will be associated with that point and will be available to the general public as well as state federal agencies. It's all and the data, all the data will be available to the homeowners, to the public. It's an open book. A uh, 12? 12? Wait. Six, because this, six, is quad, 16. this is quadruplicate. 16. Okay. Wait, the replicate would be 8. There's 8 for the regular and 8 for the replicate. There's a... Oh, you're doing a... Well, you, she needs quadruplicate for one. So the replicate would be replicate. another quadruplicate. Oh. Uh, we decided we're going to do the VIC. Oh. The quadruplicate, it's two preserved, two unpreserved, right? What's the ones after this? Yes. The EIC was so then that comes to eight. eight.